Hey, morning, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, it's getting warm today. We're in King City. Today's the what, July 7th? Uh, it's a Saturday, 7 o'clock. Wes and I are out here catching the sun. Who are King you? King City, along the river. My name is Juan Martinez from Gonzales. We're here today to, to tour the Salinas Valley and the, the water basin, and mainly to ex explain to folks how we have a, a great opportunity to develop uh, our, our uh, waterways and our uh, concern for water and bring the kids out here so they can enjoy the area. So this is a nice scenic area when, when we thought we'd uh, take a tour today through the, the, the water basin and check out the creeks and, and uh, water sources coming into the valley. And, and, uh, and then we'll see where that leads. But uh, we got a, uh, some projects that maybe could be developed for community recreational activity and uh, plus save the water as well. So that's a big one. Uh, I'm a member of a group that we're starting. It's called the Salinas Valley Water Protectors. Uh, we have quite a few people that have not acknowledged support. So uh, we're developing that to come up with some ideas and hopefully we could develop uh, some plan for the Monterey Bay Community Power and local state government uh, agencies supporting it as well to help develop this. So uh, we'll see where that leads. Yeah, it's a Heck, this could be a 20, 30 year project, you know, but I know one thing, if you don't put a timeline on this sort of thing, it never gets done. So it's about hey, when do we start and, and what's the timeline and, and, and what's our objectives uh, throughout that, uh, that phase, right? So there's opportunities and uh, we'll see what happens next election too. 2020, uh, 50th anniversary of uh, Earth Day. So that's a big deal. You know, it's going to bring a lot of attention to environment and stuff. So we're developing this film today. And uh, again, uh, uh, July 7th, 20. 18. So uh, come along. Let's see what we've got. Well, if, if you pan around, you'll see how everything is uh, really uh, uh, country out here. You know, you see a lot. And there's the, the Highway 101 southbound. Um, we are in King City, and we're going to be uh, touring the area. In this particular area, we have access, you got the road here and stuff. So for example, this could be a parking lot, bathrooms, toilets, uh, have solar panels out here generating uh, energy as well, uh, help provide for the city of King, uh, which is right across the river there. Um, you see images like the Chevron, McDonald's, Taco Bell, way in the distance out there. To our, uh, our left, you'll see the highway, and uh, uh, it looks, could be that volcano. What is that out there, Wes? That looks like a volcano. It's out towards uh, uh, more like Greenfield, Soledad, in the Pinnacles area. There you are. Yep. And there's a sign, King City, next three exits. This so this is how far we are off the main street. You can get off really quick, get back on, a, a great rest stop off the highway, a little vacation spot. You know, it could be out here during the day. Uh, kids can come out of here. Right now, it's kind of, you know, it's sad. I moved back to Gonzales, right? And I'm finding out that a lot of the kids, when you ask them, uh, have you been to the beach? They go, no, they haven't been to the beach. And... You know, you start to talk to the parents and stuff, and you start to hear stories like it costs five dollars for a, a hot dog, you know, and 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 they they can't afford it. They got four or five kids, you know, and uh, at uh, minimum wage and stuff, and the rents being as high as they are. So uh, yeah, it affects everybody. And here we have all the sand, all this environment where uh, throughout the entire Salinas Valley, people I, I believe should have access to to the environment here and and enjoy it and 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 uh, make it better and. Uh, be able to appreciate it right now they don't feel they're wanted here uh they can't just walk out here they can't just throw out a picnic table and or a barbecue pit and have a barbecue on the fourth of july or anything and they got to travel somewhere and it'll cost some money if they could just come out here and enjoy themselves um the kids learn the parents support it and it uh it helps everybody everybody so i i think uh it's, a, it's got great potential and then the kids are going to come up with their own ideas like we are coming up with ours so uh it's a great project, so we'll see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Here we are. 
July 7, 2018. We're in Greenfield today. We're approaching the Roseco Bridge. This is the Roseco uh, uh, River Bridge and uh, between uh, up the hill from uh, Greenfield. And in right in the heart of the wine corridor, and we have a number of wineries and, and stuff around here. Uh, you go up uh, another 12 miles and we have quite a uh, resort area, Roseco. Uh, if you pan over to your, right behind you here, Wes, you get the idea yeah. of all the wineries and such. And that's what we have here locally. You see the mileage, you see the distance from here to Salinas, here to, 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 to Monterey and stuff. So you get a good idea. Not bad. Okay. So as we're going down the Salinas River, I mean, you know, we got a lot of water and kids used to come down here. When we were small, this is where we learned to swim. Our parents, we, we love this side. And you see where the public has come out and put uh, blocks so you could create uh, swimming holes. But what we see happening recently is that they have um, blocked the place out with no parking signs. Before, this whole place would be full of cars and people would come down in here and enjoy the area. Now we're finding, Wes and I are driving up here and we see no parking signs. Nobody could park here. And right up the hill here, we have million dollar estates. Right up the hill, 200 mm -hmm. yards away, million dollar estates. And here's where all the Latinos used to park at because up the hill, where you get the Fred's camp and, 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 and Miller's, Miller's Lodge and such and the camping ground area. Uh, National Park is here. Um, uh, Pico Blanco. We have a number of places with Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, all that kind of stuff is back up in here, up the canyon. And uh, Carmel Valley Road comes out another five, six miles up the road here as well so you can connect into Carmel. Um, and yet, we can park here in this beautiful environment. Come on down a bit, down, down the, and we'll look up, up river and down river. Ladies and gentlemen, excuse the light, but here we are. Salinas River, you're looking downstream, the uh, Roseco River, excuse me. And this is leading into the Salinas River. As it go, goes down, you got another you know, maybe seven, eight miles and it uh, hooks up right to the west of Highway 101 as it uh, reaches into Soledad. Right before Soledad on the south side, uh, both rivers come together and, uh, and they lead down into the, the uh, Monterey Bay Sanctuary. Eventually it ends up down in there. Uh, so beautiful setting all the way down, number of swimming holes, people set up the rocks. And, and it creates a backlog and of course then you got the water and you guys a great environment. So this is what we're doing here today and it's a, it's a beautiful project. Now uh, Wes, you might want to come over this way because of the vehicle. So uh, here we are filming today to, to, to get a good feel for the area. And uh, we have a number of vehicles coming through. Here's one. So as we, as we look down the, the river, well, there's, there's, there's swimming, there's fishing. You know, great fun, but uh, you can't park anywhere around here. So uh, we're gonna head out of here and head downstream and see where we end up uh, next stop. Beautiful, huh, Wes? Oh, yeah. We come down here, we find a place to park, and you can enjoy it. Look at this. Get a zoom on that sucker, man. Beautiful. Good water, too. Fourth of July litter, ladies and gentlemen. Take a good look at your Fourth of July litter. This is what people bring in and they leave it here. If you pack it in, you pack it out. Matter of fact, you should take out more stuff than you brought in. That's the idea here. Mm -hmm. And if you look straight down west, look at the, the rocks and, and, and look at those big boulders that back down in there in the base of the Salina, of the Seco River. You'll see where you have, you have a uh, uh, solid rock and uh, is that way all the way up creek and down creek as well?
Pretty day. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? Hey, here we are, south of the Rosecco Bridge, about a couple of miles. And this is uh, on, on uh, Thorpe Road. And on Thorpe Road, uh, about 20 years ago, they built this Thorn bridge. Thorn with an N. Thorn? Thorn. Thorn, so. Thorn Road. With, uh, and, and look around, we got the wineries and stuff. We just came up from the canyon right behind us here. Uh, and again, we noticed no parking, no parking, no parking. It's kind of sad that here we have a beautiful ambiance and stuff we can enjoy and you can't park nearby or there's no organized parking area. If that's the issue and the danger, then maybe we should scrape out a piece of land and make a parking spot. Uh, anyway, we'll take a look at the river and see how things are going down, down, uh, down the river bank and see what's happening. Come on down. We're at this particular location uh, because what we like to do is give an example of what we're talking about. Over to our left here, uh, we were just standing there and it looks like it's uh, right off the road, fairly close. You see the, our vehicle there. Uh, so you can get off the road and turn this whole place into a parking area where people then can walk on down and enjoy the ambiance of the creek, uh, Rosecco River here. And uh, we got our bridge. So let's near the river and we'll see what, what that looks like. We usually end up in a situation, oftentimes, especially in the Salina, uh, Roseco River, um, we get a lot of uh, a seepage. So the Roseco River tends to disappear on us, uh, oftentimes uh, downstream from the, uh, from the bridge. So this is one of those areas are very rocky, as you can see, very porous. So the water will seep in, and it could be a couple of feet on the ground there. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens if we get near the, the embankment there. As you can tell by looking at the soil here, Wes, uh, you know, it, uh, you get this moss indicating to us, obviously, that there's a lot of moisture here during the, during the, the winter and the, and the rain. You know, all this is moss that has grown on these rocks. There you have it. Water throughout the whole area here. Uh, river's right behind me. We'll see what we got. Excellent. Well, folks, here we are. We're at the base of the uh, Roseco River, about a mile, maybe two, downstream from the uh, Roseco Bridge. And uh, sad to say, this is what we got left. If I was sitting here during the winter, I'd probably be in about 10 feet of water underneath. You know, behind me there's a rise of about 10 feet. So the water would fill up pretty much on a good wet, wet winter and flow downstream into the Salinas Valley. If you look down beyond the bridge there and look into the mountains, you'll see the pinnacles. You see the pinnacles there oh, underneath gosh. the bridge. I uh, can't really see them too well. Yeah, you can. They're there. Come over this way, Wes. Right you there. got it. Um, okay. That's them. Cool. That's the pinnacles. Excellent. I thought it was the other taller one. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's not the peak, but it's the... Those are the pinnacles, not, not, not that mountain peak. That blue out. Let's get out of here before we get a ticket. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing today? We're uh, moving on down the line, as we say, downstream. Uh, right here, this location is Paraiso uh, Vineyards uh, Tasting Room. And here we are, uh, you look across the valley here, you got the pinnacles, that's the rough edges sticking up over here. Got the pinnacles, then you got the mountain range here. Uh, King City and everything will be over to your, to your, uh, the south over to your 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 right west. If you pan over, you see the Salinas Valley over to the right. Look at all the water they're spraying. That's a lot of water they're spraying right now, right? Oh yeah. Throughout the entire valley, you, you look across the valley, that glitter out there, that's water being sprayed. 
that's water being sprayed everywhere. You start to take a good look at the valley and you start to look at how much spraying is going on. And, uh, and this is just a small part of the valley. Right. But you look across, you see all that, 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 that spraying across there, across the Salinas uh, 101 there. Yes. So, let's move on and I'll get on down towards the uh, Roseco and the Salinas River and solid that. Agua es la vida. We need Wachoni. Water is life. Yeah, feels good. Nice place for a blessing. I'm telling you, man. Peas? What are those? Not quite sure. Something. Huh? Something. But once upon a time, I bet you somebody tried to eat one of them, and they probably you got sick. Hmm. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> you can be our guinea pig. Bulgambilias. I visited one of uh, Guadalajara, and in Guadalajara, there's a community south of Guadalajara, headed towards the coast, not far, uh, but it's called uh, Bulgambilia Village or something like that, but uh, nothing but Bulgambilia. This whole wall here, decorated with uh, local flowers and stuff. We got jasmine, uh, the blue uh, morning glories, and you got some white morning glories. This west, this is beautiful or what? Right. Oh my God, look how big they are. It's a lot of color. Yeah, they are That's pretty big. That's how big they are. Huh? Beautiful. Bigger than your ear. Like this? It's half your right. face. <laughs> Gonna have to come get some cuttings, take it home, plant it. There we'll you see go. this in the spring of next year at my house. Neat. I will. I'll, I'll do it when people are here. I don't yeah. want to do it when the no. No. Yeah. Ask permission. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, Antonio Velasco, Doctor Antonio Velasco. Him and I were here, but oh, shit, that was the last time I was here. In case you don't know, that community down here that we see is Soledad. That's Soledad there in the horizon. And we're headed that way now for a potential project along the Salinas River. In the Salinas River, you can probably see the trees from here where they're coming together in the south end of town. And uh, that's where hopefully our future project will be, down the valley there. Catch some of that water, that runoff that's coming off these... Uh, canals and stuff. Maybe we can do something there with that. Well, let's go find out. I'm an old. These guys were harvested out of Salinas River this morning because they're still moist. They're still flexible, and you got the water. So someone caught them put them in water, later decided to dump them, and they dumped them right here. Obviously, because it's sand, it's very porous, yet it's it's wet. Tells me it was very recent this morning, maybe an hour ago, half hour? Yeah. Last night, at no. the latest. This morning, it looks like, but okay. What do you think? So, why, why this is what we they... have in the Salinas River, ladies and gentlemen. We also have uh, steelhead and uh, salmon. So uh, when we do have water in the river, this is what's going on. And what's happening here, obviously, the release of the water in the dam up, upstream here has allowed 
for the fish to come back. Because for the last couple of years, it's been dry. No fish. All of a sudden, look what we got here. It's a pretty good sized fish. Pretty good size. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We're uh, downstream from uh, the Roseco River. We're at, the, at the, the base of the river. See that behind us here? You see the uh, uh, Toro Peak way at the far end, the top. That's the Santa Lucia's over here behind me. Uh, over overhead, you got the bridge and uh, headed towards the Salinas River. Both these rivers connect right downstream here, about a half mile. If you were to walk downstream, you see where they both hook up and uh, one connects into the other. Uh, behind me here, Soledad. And if you guys don't know where that's at, it's in a place called Chole. Here you got the Vato Locos that came by and must have tagged it. So uh, we're going to move on now to the Salinas River and get an eyeball for that. But you previously saw that the, uh, we had the catfish. Catfish don't swim in rock. So they must be coming from the Salinas River. So we'll take a look at that. Is that amazing or what? In the middle of all this. Right. Well, it's, it's got pretty good protection with the... Uh the barrier blocking some wind and still getting enough sun ladies and gentlemen beautiful uh, flowers here naturally grown this is in the riverbed of the arroyo seco river uh we're right under the bridge here and uh life will prevail i mean look at this beautiful flower Robust. Who would expect something like this here? It's thriving. It's a thriving plant. It's feeding birds. It's feeding uh, bugs. Bees come by. They pollinate. You can do this kind of stuff along the Salinas River, up and down. Plant trees, plant flowers, poppies, and make a project out of the, the Salinas River Basin from King City all the way to the mouth of the river. Um, this is a small example. You know what I mean? But this is what we have, and uh, beautiful place. Look down the valley here, you see the, the windmills and the, the development going on. Yet you look inside this small little ravine, canyon, creek, river, and uh, what do you see, you know? You don't see all the, the nasty of society, etc., and the beauty of nature. So. Uh, Agua es la vida. Winnie Wachoni. Water is life. ¿Qué más quieres? A project in every community come out and do this around the, the, the bridges, right? Well, Just around the bridges. That there's document, a dime. There you go, money. To document it and have a have a cleanup site, right? Yeah. Boy Scouts could do it. it. Along All with the Girl Scouts it. and parents. Yep, all over the city. Every city has Boy Scouts, Cup Scouts, Girl Scouts. Right. Make a project. Have barbecue. Fly a kite when the wind comes up. A homemade kite and compete. That sounds fun. Yeah. Camp overnight, do a weekend. Some funner. I can make all kinds of fun. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Uh, we just moved along here from the Roseco River. Uh, we're just down downstream here. Actually, west, if you pan over to the to your left there, you see that berm that turns kind of white? That's the, the Roseco River. And that's where we were recently at, underneath that bridge. Behind us here is a location off of Highway 101. We're on the, on the uh, southbound side of Highway 101. And if we look over to our, our uh, left here, my left, west, your right, you see a barn, and beyond the barn is the old hotel. We're going to take a walk over that way and take a look. If this is a Monterey Carmel. This place would be developed, be a popular site. It'd be in all the maps and the wineries. We use this as a staging area as well for their shows, etc. Right off the highway. Here's the off ramp right behind me here. So uh, it's kind of sad that we're not moving this project along. I remember years ago uh, we used to come here when we were kids, but uh, on the way to the solve that mission 
which is right up the road here. Let's move on. Things that open? Wow, somebody forgot something. We're a mile for one of these. Actually, here we are standing next to a telephone pole. This telephone pole, steel brace, beautiful trim. Right here. Beautiful work, right. sitting here. It's a flagpole. There's our museum. Used to be a hotel, stage stop, back in the day. So all that mission was uh, right up the road here. When the river and the creeks would fill up, this would be a holding over area for the water to go down before they could cross. We've seen previously how the water seeps into the soil. That allows the people to cross. So this was a, an area for that. And that's why people stayed the night. And that's what we have here. So you get the water tower over here behind us. Downstream, Salinas Valley. So ladies and gentlemen, while we're at this particular stop, it's part of a connection with uh, other, other areas that we could target for potential development for recreational and uh, commercial use as well, as well as the tourism, because we have the winery here over on the, on the other side of the valley. We got the, the, the pinnacles, and the national monument, wineries on that side as well. You see here, West Highway 101, right behind me here, you see Solidad as well, southbound. So if you look over this way now, you got this beautiful building sitting here. I tell you what, if somebody took the time to put money into this place, they could be having a lot of fun here. Got a lot of water. Both sides, Salinas River, Arroyo Seco, Solidad Mission, uh, Paraiso Hot Springs, Paraiso Vineyards and the winery, Arroyo Seco. Follow the, the hillside road and you end up in uh, headed towards Monterey, seaside area and, and uh, the, the coast. Highway 101 right here. What's the delay? I don't understand. Why is this stuff happening? Lack of money. Uh, there's resources out there. There's, there's private industry. Uh, we just need a vision, need a plan. Obviously, there has been a mission. There was a plan. Uh, I remember as a kid, people talked about it. This place is supposed to be haunted, for example. Stories about that. People saw that here in Chole. All the homies, they could tell you about that. Uh, but it's quite a place. Got mature trees, got a great ambiance off the highway. You can cross the river on foot from here, come out in Soledad on the north side of the Highway 101, where we're gonna visit next for the next possible project area that I think will be worthy of a good visit and a walkthrough. So we're gonna walk around the building and work our way back and then work on down the valley. Right now we're looking at about 10 o'clock we did start this morning at 7 and settled that, so we were working our way down the valley. So uh, down uh, downstream, as we call it, down creek. So uh, here we go. Come on now, follow us around. Let's start with this one, and then we'll work that building. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Here we are on the back side of that same building. We're going to do a quick walkthrough, and I'm just noticing a few plants around the area. You know, we got a... Uh, I forget exactly what the name of this one is. We have it here as well. This here, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, is the grandfather to the artichoke. If you let an artichoke bloom, this is what you get. You get a flowering top, take a close look, and you see the resemblance. The artichoke. This is the artichoke, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Solid California. Yeah, so uh, we do 
do have an old sign over here. Let's take a look at that old sign. See what that says, Wes. Ooh. Future sight. There are your shadows in the way. Yeah, it works a lot better that way. Well, ladies That's and gentlemen, perfect. here's a good example of the effort that has been given thus far. This is a sign that was knocked down here. It's been here for a while. You can tell there's no grass there. Yeah, I can see it a lot better when it was on the ground. So, we're going to put the sign up along the fence here so people can see that. Wes, I'm going to go work over that way. Okay. Spring of 2002. 79 room hotel and yeah. restaurant. So, so somebody shared your vision. So ladies and gentlemen, by accident we came across this laying out here. Obviously it was, it was moved because they cut the grass so we could tell it was recently moved. So we put it up again. Obviously we need a new one. So there's different projects on the valley that need to be upgraded. We're going to see quite a few as we walk through and uh, videotape uh, our locations here. But this one, La Posada de Chole. I mean, La Posada de Soledad. It's great. I mean, that's what that, that, that's all that mission was. It was La Posada. That's where people would rest stop. That was La Posada. Here it is, off the highway, hotel, 79 rooms, plenty of room and ambiance for entertainment, weekend events, that sort of thing, weddings, uh, quinceaneras, get family gatherings and events. So, a lot of potential here. Beautiful place. So we're gonna get up a little closer and then we'll head on down to the next site. I think we got some more signs here. There's like a couple of planks. planks yeah. What's cool though, you used to have a horseshoe. Lucky horseshoe. And everything's My grandfather buried. lived in a place it, like huh? this, underneath the water tower. Are you kidding? Grandpa lived in here after the uh, Bracero, Bracero uh, era, when he was uh, here, a uh, contract uh, worker as a, you know, Mexicano. He was a, a veteran of the Mexican Revolution, so he was too old to be in the Bracero program. But him and my mom would, and, his, and my mom's sister and my aunt would be coming back and forth since uh, the Civil War in Mexico, the revolution there. Uh, so, my grandpa, he felt real comfortable in a, in a, in a water tank like this and uh, fixed it up inside and made it a one-room studio for himself. And he had his barbecue pit and everything outside and having some of his friends come over, so that was great. They talked about the Mexican Revolution. I don't remember much about it because they're talking Spanish and I was a kid then. And of course, my grandpa died in 1960. So, by then I was eight years old, but, uh, Great times, great history. This is all part of our, our, our roots, so uh, we'll move along. These old uh, wooden beams above my head here, these guys right here, yeah. indicate how old the building is. Last time it was remodeled or fixed up or built. These beams have been here since then, you can tell. There's no new putting or anything around there, so it looks original from the point of uh, its construction. Uh, we have a great fire uh, fireplace here. Uh, I don't know what it looks like on the inside. I don't, I don't remember. Hopefully somebody, when they view this video, might have some pictures. That would be great. Old pictures of back in the day when this place was used. Right now, the only ones living here are the swallows. Yeah. And we have a lot of swallows that uh, fly around, so a uh, pretty healthy place for them. So that's great. These here must have been pieces that were rotted out or termited. I see termites on this face on this side. Uh, I didn't see it on that side. But you can tell it's starting to get eaten away by termites. So that possibly would happen here and uh, they cut them off. In 
if you take a real close look at the building, uh, you'll see the original foundation, the original building. It's all adobe on the face here. That other part, which is the add-on part, the newer, newer part, I should say, the newer part, uh, it was, if we look that way, from the fireplace that way, yeah. and even if you look at the roof, you'll be able to tell what will be the new and what is the old. Mm -hmm. So the new would be the redwood, real nice wood done. And this is obviously, I mean, look at it. Don't pick at it. You see it there? We have a major problem with this, okay? I shouldn't even be touching that. What happens here, when you get the running off the moisture and the wind coming in, beating at it, sooner or later, this is mud, this dirt. What's gonna happen here, we all know, so uh, we need to really start looking at this stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, what are you gonna do? All right, so I'm at this uh, stage, stage uh, what is it? <laughs> Flatbed. Obviously, it, from this view, where I'm sitting at, it reminds me of the farm worker Buses, wooden planks, flat bed, all they needed here was the walls, right? But obviously, it was an agricultural vehicle for hauling hay, that sort of thing. And I uh, used to have, uh, uh, I guess, the old wheels on here, you know, the old stage wheels. But it's set up here as a, a, a traction getter, but also becomes a, a possible place for vandals and stuff to come and take what they think uh, looks good at their house. And uh, anyway, we got beautiful ambiance, just a tree, a nice oak tree, a couple of hundred, maybe a thousand years old. Let's we'll take a look at it, come on over. This is uh, to give you an idea of the size of the tree. Uh, obviously, this is the root side, so it was pretty wide. You take a look at this thing. Yeah, I think this is the top side and that's the fall over side because it looks like some somebody used it as a, a tree house. That helicopter you hear, that helicopter you see there, uh, is a, it has a spray rig on there. They're out spraying agricultural crops or uh, possible problems, uh, agricultural problems with uh, with their crops, so that's what they do up and down the valley. Uh, they spray pesticides and things like this. But you'll see on this tree, what I'm thinking here, is that that could have been a uh, could have been a, uh, a tree house on this tree at one time. Because the way these are staged, they could be a, like a ladder. And people walking up, and then the tree fell over. Uh, we have a slope coming down this way. On the lower side, we see these uh, uh, pepper trees. Historically, the pepper trees were brought in by the Spaniards for the flavor, for the pepper. So that's a spice. These are spices right here. I don't know if you knew that. Come and grab some of that red stuff, take it home, grind it down, and you'll, you'll, you'll get the flavor of the spice. So it's a pepper tree. Here we have the divider here, the highway. And then over here, if you look over here, we got the Salinas Valley. And what happens, when people come off the road like this and they go to Salinas Valley, they get to see, and here's our police officers driving by, all three of them. Here's one, here's the other. So that whole riverbed ends up being our, our uh, environmental uh, cultural project. Those are officers, our taxpayer money, driving down the street, northbound, back to Chole to do the job. Uh, we have a place here off the road where people can park their cars, for example, rest stop. Parking area here. You got a, another road coming over on this side, west. If you follow me over this way, west. Each over this way. This could possibly be developed. We're gonna take a quick look over that way and see what's possible right, right over the berm on this side. Ready? All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm standing here across the street from our parking area and he has, uh, saw that stagecoach stop, uh, La Posada de Soledad, and we came across the highway. This is a small example, for example, what, what's happening in Salinas Valley with the water. It's being sucked out, you see it everywhere. You already seen it from the mountainside up at the, at the winery. If you look over the Salinas Valley, 
you start to see some of the trees that have died from the uh, drought that we've had. Um, so you see the, the tree treetop areas, and they look pretty bad. But uh, the wind, the dryness of the trees, and the wind has caused a lot of these to dry up and uh, and die. Some of them are cracking over. You'll see busted trees here and there. Again, the reason for the video is for people to see the potential environmental uh, beauty that we have at our disposal, but we're not using it. If you look over this way towards Soledad and across the Salinas River, you'll see the, uh, the old uh, Sequoia wood processing plant in the distance. That's been shut down for over 30 years that I know of. Yeah. Uh, you got the old water tank way in the far side by Metz Road, and the winery out there. And we've got Salinas River right here at the basin. If you look over down this way, we got an empty lot. It's a small agricultural area, a couple of acres, and uh, maybe two at the most. One for sure. Uh, one, yeah, two. Okay, so oftentimes we're here over and over. Why developing these county parks and stuff only brings in problems, drug dealing, uh, overnight staying, for example, and people don't like that. But I see the potential of maybe some solar solar project here with uh, water uh, with uh, uh, water toilet rest area off the highway. You got the exits already here. You just drive down in here. And one of the other reasons that kind of bothers me a bit is that they say, hey, well, people are gonna come around. They're just gonna mess the place up. You're gonna get dirty. People are gonna leave their litter and all that. But if you take a look down here and you walk over this way. You start to see what happens when people don't pay attention to the place and it's out of sight out of mind but if it's in your face and it's a community project then you got the, the schools you got community groups boy scouts girl scouts the brownies the blue jays people can come and then make this a community project they've been doing some great projects out of gonzalez high school solidad greenfield community projects i've seen a, quite a few in salinas with La Paz Park and, and guys like you, Wes, for example, go out and do community work on weekends, clean up the garbage. Uh, look across the street over this way. This, this is what's happening. The agriculture companies are using it for their space and you got the litter. So how come these ag guys aren't being told, hey, if you're gonna use the place, fine. Clean up the mess, real simple. And they have a crew, 30, 40 people, five minutes, the whole place is cleaned up. But it has to be that kind of community effort, that kind of consciousness, that kind of understanding as to why. They're not being told they have to. They should be jumping on it as a, as a, as a point of pride, because why? Their vehicle with their name on there, and then you got that litter right there. That don't look good for their name. I would think maybe that can be a little caveat to get people to, to move on things like this. And once the owner starts to realize you get, there's a good point here, it's a win-win for everybody. So. Uh, Again, another positive opportunity, uh, but we need to discuss these with the uh, money people, the uh, city councils, county, state, folks like that. Personally, we have uh, John Lair as national uh, or uh, uh, natural resource director for the state of California. Uh, Senator Manning, uh, Mr. Rivas just got elected from the primary or uh, won the primary. He's going to be looking at November election, probably for state assembly, replacing uh, Ana Caballero. Uh, so things are happening, there's connections out there, resources that we could probably plug into, and uh, private groups and organizations. The wineries, I'm sure, will benefit greatly from having uh, this kind of ambiance throughout the Salinas Valley, where all the wineries will benefit, not just one or two, but all of them. So uh, let's move on down the other side of the bridge. We're going to show you what that potentially looks like on the, uh, what we call the, uh, yeah, headed, headed towards Gonzalez, whether it be north according to the highway, but it's really west, northwest. But we're going to head that way. There's another potential project there by the shopping center in Solidaire. So uh, let's move along and we'll catch that. Thank you. Welcome to the project here. Uh, we're now in Solidaire. Uh, on the south end of Solidaire, look behind me here, you see Highway 101 northbound. That's the northbound bridge there. Uh, Skinner yes. and Serrano bridge. Those two veteranos from Soledad, the homeboys here, uh, were killed in the Vietnam War. Uh, and uh, the two bridges are named after them, Serrano and uh, Skinner. So those are uh, guys I knew at school, but 
they were older than I was at the time. I was probably a freshman or an eighth grade, and they were like seniors or juniors in high school. But we knew them, they were ball players and stuff, so yeah, dedicated to them. It'd be nice to dedicate a park down here. County, state, city, park. Let's take a look at what we have. All right, so if you look down the street here behind me, uh, that's a shopping center. Shopping center is here to my, my uh, right, and uh, right next, between the shopping center and the bridge, you got these houses. And you got about four acres, maybe five acres back up in here. And then you got the, the berm, which is what we're standing on here. If you look back over along the, the basin of the river bank, you'll see more irrigation, you'll see more fields, uh, people working in the background there. Uh, and the uh, Metz Road is back along the, the base of the hill there. So this is what we have here. We have quite a spot here. This, this particular spot would be a great uh, picnic area for families to come down, walk down in here, have a walk area, and possibly uh, have picnics on weekends where you could come out and enjoy the beach, be at it in the river. We saw water when we were in King City. Uh, we saw it again over towards Greenfield. So uh, here we are, and I think it's a great opportunity. Mature trees all up and down. Uh, people can come here. Uh, and if uh, when it dries up or if they like they cross the river and they could be up on the other bank That's where we just came from where you have the, the potential uh, Recreational area and rest stop and then uh, if you're on that side of the bridge on this when you cross the, the river and you get on the southbound side of the river Headed that way you're running right into that hotel and that the old ghost town ghost uh, Hotel stage stop that we had there so uh, great place, great project. Hope to see the guys work on it. Uh, great opportunity. If this is Salt Dead and Gonzales, Greenfield, King City, if they're to grow in the future, they gotta have places like this. Because the, the, the land itself for building is too expensive to put a park. But we have our park and we're not developing it. And we don't have to pay for it, it's already there. All we gotta do is put a little walkway, barbecue pits, have some management over, the, over it. And, uh, and have it pay for itself somehow. I, I think solar panels, windmills, a restroom area with solar panels can maybe generate money. Uh, there's projects we could do that, that we could bring forth that might uh, help in that. Uh, the schools, obviously, the kids come in school projects again on this side of the river. We were on the previous side, uh, potential there. On this side, kids can walk to the river after school if they want, uh, to the river now. I mean, they do it now, but there's no organized place to go. So, uh, as a kid myself, I walked along the river all the time. And all the salt that guys did here as well. So, uh, it's a place that's already frequented. So why not manage it so that it's clean? Because we saw what happened. Look around. Follow me over this way, Wes. Look at here. This is what happens. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Oops. And you look down the, the, the ravine, it's a toxic mess. So I can imagine every time we have water, the water rises, picks everything up, and takes it down to where? The sanctuary, Monterey Bay. We don't need that. We already have floating islands of plastic all over the Pacific. We don't need it anymore, and we have it here. Let's grab it, pick it up, take it to where it belongs, process it, regenerate uh, flags and other materials. But it don't belong here. Yet, this has been going on for years, years, decades. We all know it. Years ago, they used to park cars out here and use it for a levy. Park cars with oil and gas and whatever. So, as our society develops and our knowledge for for life in general and the respect for nature, these are the things we have to take on. This is our responsibility. We can't blame anybody else. Look at the, the generation, the greatest generation. What are they, 90? 95 years old? And then you got the Vietnam guys, or the Korea, they're 80, 85. And then you got the Nam, the 60s, 70s. So it's our responsibility. Leadership now falls on our hands. So we're gonna do something or not. But uh, time's passing by and we ain't got time to waste. Uh, it's very crucial we act now. All right, hey, come on down. We're in Gonzales Salu. Uh, we just walked out the street. You can look back over this way. We've got the, the, the school, grammar school here. 
Got another grammar school on this side. And right behind this here is a daycare center. Uh, we pan over this way, and you'll see the Gonzales Saloon. This is the project area that we're looking at for Gonzales. And uh, a lot of potential. We're on the, on the berm on the shoulder here, on the, looking towards the Santa Lucia's and uh, Toro Peak on the high side there. And right now we're looking, what, what I said, by 11.30? Uh, it's about 11. By 11? Mm -hmm. Okay, by 11 o'clock on a Saturday, uh, July 7th, 2018. Two, actually we got a year and a half before the 50th anniversary of uh, Earth Day. So heads up on that, folks. Let's get on down and take a look at the project, see what's going on down there. Notice here, uh, once upon a time, the city yeah, not too long ago. had a little project and they had steps here. Right. And these steps were to guide people down safely down into the saloon area. The grammar school kids uh, fixed the shoulder on this side. So they had some, some work there, and uh, which is great. So let's see if we could do anything more in the future. So from this point, folks, uh, you can see uh, recently the, the saloon dried up on us. Uh, Let's get over in the sun. You can see you a lot better. <coughs> our saloon here. Uh, grammar school's up on top. We got our, our church here. The far distance uh, between the trees there. Oak trees, pine trees, uh, redwoods, a sequoia down this way. We'll walk that way in a little while. Uh, this year when we were here west, uh, springtime was full of water and we had some ducks in here. And some baby, baby ducklings as well. So it's a natural habitat for the uh, for uh, God's gift, and uh, they come fly in, fly out. So uh, we would take a walk down the bottom here. Okay. So from this point, we really don't have to walk too far down, but to give you an idea of the length of it, and this is one section. We have five sections in the city of Gonzales that are between the streets. Every block has a street coming over it. So we got this one here on the South uh, uh, Down Creek. Down Creek here uh, would be Fourth, Fourth Street. What I don't understand is if it's such an uh, environmentally sensitive area, why would they put power poles in the middle of the creek? Ooh. Uh, the same goes back this way. Now, I know the winery has a lot to do with it. The city, of course, authorized it, but I don't see why they couldn't use the street or the, the top site. Why they put it down in here is a question I'm going to ask. But, uh, you can see recently they just burned that shoulder on the far side and that's like a control burn. That control burn, the purpose is to keep, uh, let's say, somebody throwing out a cigarette or a match along the road there. Uh, that'll be 2nd Street on that side. 3rd uh, Street, because that's 4th, that's 2nd. 3rd Street actually comes out right about here somewhere, but up on the curb on that side. It dead ends and it goes that way. So uh, here's our potential here for a nice shoulder, uh, trail, little barbecue area maybe. We got a nice places here where the swimming pool is at, towards the swimming pool area. We got areas there as well, the access to the park up on top. And then you got the Little League Diamond and the sports field as well. And then you got the kids here. Our biggest health problem that I understand at this point is the mosquitoes. And um, should we bring water in, it becomes stale. Well, you see the wind? The wind's blowing through. Uh, we got great sun down here in South County. We're blessed with that. We could put in solar panels and stuff, drop in a few pumps, circulate the water, have fish, here, fish in here, have uh, different habitat as well that can grow in here because of that. Uh, and uh, create cash flow because we got solar panels, we got windmills. So, uh, we could do that with, uh, again, uh, other resources, state, federal, uh, local resources. You know, the one I personally try to push a lot is uh, Monterey Bay Community Power because, you know, they're about the environment and the folks I work with, you know, so they're a great group of people. And uh, so it's, uh, it's about who you know, uh, oftentimes it's politics and, and what they can get out of it. So I know everybody's concerned about the environment. Well, then, how concerned are you? Talk a lot? Do nothing? Sounds good, right? So, uh, that's too much of that. I think we need more action. It's a good example here, a potential project. Why the school couldn't continue 
I am assuming at this point, assumption on my part, of course, that uh, because it is an environmentally sensitive area, they couldn't do anything. But then, of course, I did say, if it's so environmentally sensitive, why are the telephone poles right in the middle of the street or in the middle of the creek, in the creek? Um, why is it the far side they've been dumping tons and tons of dirt? Who knows where the dirt comes from? Uh, potentially uh, toxic. Why aren't they dumping it somewhere else? What's the intent of that? Build something there? Fill it in? Why? If it's so environmentally sensitive, can they do that? And yet I can't come in the, down here and walk on it because it's environmentally sensitive. We have city officials, city officials owning property along the creek that have already accessed the creek for their personal use. Uh, so they're on to the, 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 the ambiance of it. And I don't blame them at all. Uh, but to limit everybody else, it's not right. So that's my issue, and I think it should be opened up where they could use it and we could use it. It's not theirs, it belongs to the public. And uh, we are the public, so uh, let's get registered to vote. I think we can make this happen real quick come November. And here we are in Gonzales. Uh, this is, look at the sign there, it says Alco and Fourth Street, corner of Alco and Fourth, across the street from the grammar school. The saloon is right behind me, behind these gates and behind the fence there. Uh, I'm standing in this particular spot because I wanted to express to you uh, as an example of what they're doing with our salute. How big do these poles gotta be? Jesus Christ, I mean, you got these poles inside the salute? This is covered area. This is the salute. You're stepping on the salute. Okay, let's walk over this way a bit, show you some more uh, concern on my part. I'm not sure if this is private property or city, uh, but I know when I was a child, this was all a uh, very rugged area with trees and branches and just a bunch of stuff that you, uh, you want to crawl around in as, as a kid, you know, it's a lot of fun. School being right here. Uh, but, you know, you can see the saloon through the fencing here. Double fence. That's where the water's running through there and, and to the right. We have a number of, uh, actually in front of us as well, we got a number of uh, pepper trees. Again, more pepper trees. This is part of the heritage that the Spaniards left when they came, is the pepper trees. You'll see those up and down the Spanish Valley in all the small towns. Not everybody uh, acknowledges them or realizes the history behind the pepper trees, but they're not native to the area. They were brought in because of the peppers and the... And the, the Favorite spice, taste spice. Uh, I do want to point out the, the dirt here. Uh, three weeks ago, I, I caught a number of trucks coming in through the gate, dropping off all this dirt. I did mention it to a number of elected officials in Gonzales about it. I uh, expressed my concern, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we do have, a, like I said again, a number of elected and, uh, and also uh, city officials who live along the, the property line here. And uh, I'm not sure if it's private property or city. So again, uh, we're showing you what our challenges are. So we're gonna go on to the next project. Uh, we're approaching Salinas River, Gonzales. This is the Gonzales River Road. There's the old road there to your left. And that road is the one that uh, goes along the berm there along the trees and the, and the agricultural land and then they built this roadway here about 40 years now this has been here this happens to be a dangerous curve uh, quite a few kids when they party here on the weekends come flying through the bridge and miss that turn so Wes let's make a left right here and we'll take a look at what's happening here at the, oh no let's go over the bridge first take a look at the river and see what's happening we got water here or not to the acre park service there's a lot of water. <clears throat> I guess I should have stopped. That would have been good, but we got to go back anyway. So Wes, so what we're looking at here is uh, the uh, the Santa Lucia side of the Salinas River and uh, Gonzales uh, River Road over the bridge. And what the proposed project here would be is everything to your left on this side. Uh, could be used for horses and that kind of sort of thing so there could be areas where people can have a recreational opportunities there 
and on the up creek or up river side of the bridge is the area that possibly could be used for uh, four by fours and other stuff because right now they're using four by fours and stuff along the Salinas River and sadly uh, you see where uh, they created a mess they leave their garbage and stuff like that and uh, and there's our beautiful Santa Lucia mountains hey now we can see yeah so agriculture keeps pushing it pushing its way out as far as it can right up to the Salinas River and when we have floods then they claim that they uh, they're they're suing for loss of uh, profit uh, while they're putting themselves in jeopardy by doing it so that's a question that should be answered so here we have a this is the south side or up creek side of the river all this brush and stuff could be dealt with as a county park and recreational area uh, people can do activities in here of different types and appreciate the fact that we have a river and uh, sand and a beautiful place to come and do recreational activities with family events on weekends and also to educate the, the future generations about the precious Salinas Valley water basin and the importance to the to the agriculture and to our families to the environment to our health to nature to the planet uh, and uh, this is where the 4x4s will go be going through. You can see the tracks all over the place there. There's the beautiful Salinas River running through. And if it's running here, we know it's running all the way to the, the river. I mean to the uh, uh, mouth of the Salinas uh, River in the ocean. So uh, now we're cruising on the shoulder, the old uh, river road. And here's where people would come and... Uh, Oftentimes we park and walk down to the river. Yeah, what's for sale is on that side. It's the land. That yeah. Yeah. And the city is looking to buy it for sewer. Oh. Put in a, a modern sewer system into 11 plus acres that's for sale down the uh, uh, down river from here, which is on the uh, south side of the Gonzales uh, River Road and the bridge. So where the old sewer plant is at now, it would be. Uh, extending and developing that. In the future, they hope to be building up on the from the Gloria Grade all the way to Fifth Street, and all that agricultural land there, all the way up to uh, the the Gonzales uh, Solid Waste Authority, the dump that we have there now, and where the water tanks are at. And they figure all that will be in there, filled with uh, houses, as well as to the north of Fifth Street. So sewer is going to be a big requirement, and water in particular will be even more so. General plans today, and let me get my hat on, because uh, I'm probably all bushy. Don't go away. Gone. I put my hat on. Uh, beautiful day out here in Gonzales today. Again, uh, we're on July 7th, 2018, and right now we're looking at about 11.30, 11.45 or so. But uh, we're in this particular spot next to the bridge in Gonzales on the south side. This here, as I'm pointing, is, is the old the street. We have asparagus. Uh, asparagus is growing from seed. You see, it's starting to get bushy on top, and that's where the seed is grown. In the distance, 2.2 2. 2 miles away, is the city of Gonzales. In the beyond, you see our windmill, and the future windmill, where that's going to be. But I'm showing here today the shoulder on, on this side of the bridge because this is where the families would come in and park along the shoulder here and they would walk down along the shoulder and enjoy the Salinas River. So we thought that we were taught to swim down in here. There's a couple swimming holes along the shoulder side and that's where kids would jump off uh, trees and stuff. So it's great. But now uh, there's no organized plan. It looks like it looks like you can't park here. Or the feeling like, hey, there's a reason why they're here. Or an officer could come by and say, well, there's a reason why they're there. And, you know, that opens up a can of worms possibly. So who wants to be here, right? They're not welcome. Uh, and that's the feeling here. Uh, so we'll take a look at what's, what we're looking at here in the, along the river bank. Processed well, topsoil. 
Well, I'm gonna wait until you get more than halfway up there before I start going. Now, why is this? Why is this here? Look at this. Because it's here for you to pick up, man. You love rocks. No. Take another look. You know what this looks like? No. Adobe. You're kidding. Corner pieces of adobe. That don't make sense. Why are these squared off? Naturally? No, no. Nope. Look at the plaster. Right. Look at the plaster. Okay. So somebody's dumping adobe here, which wow. means they're knocking down an old building. Did they have a permit to knock down the old building? Where did the stop soil come from? Three so somebody. Questions. And there's a lot of square brick off like this. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's definitely loose. This is new. I knew that coming down. Good question. Well, let's go up to well, the bridge. What makes the difference maybe... is the plaster. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right. Over. Trash dump. Uh, we used to call it King's Towing. Probably still called King's Towing. And back there was a, uh, a sewer pond and at the, or sewer plant. Sewer plant. At the sewer plant, my grandfather ran the place since the 20s, 1900s or so. He lived there for a long time. His family would hunt and fish along the river. Uh, I forget exactly what date he was born, but he was married to my grandma. Grandma was born in 1882. He must be 10 years on her, five. So you're looking there at uh, 1880, for sure. So uh, that's before Wounded Knee, by the way. Uh, so the stories of all these people and uh, the history of what happened during that, that time period. People like my grandfather and people who lived out here in these areas stay away from potential harm and the, the obviously discrimination and uh, uh, slavery they were put into because in those days uh, if you're not working you're a you're a vagrant of my how is it vagrant, vagrant and you're loitering uh, there'd be a fine yeah you can't pay the fine so you got to work it off now nobody wanted taxes because they had slaves so as long as the Spanish and then the, the Californios and then the Anglos all did the same thing, we all prospered. Everybody but them. And they were here first and we stole their land. Then we put our name on it and we say, hey, now you're trespassing, you're gonna go to jail. Meanwhile, you grew up on that land, you've been there all your life, family grew up there. So this whole place, Santa Lucia's, down to uh, Paraiso Hot Springs, over to the mission in San Juan Bautista. You know, the people would walk there, you know? If they're lucky to have a horse, but then they'd be accused of stealing the horse. So, uh, and the sad part, of course, uh, if you look at the history, they weren't allowed to testify in court. So whatever was done to them, they can never say anything about anybody in court. So, uh, it's hard to wonder why people say, well, how come you guys are a bunch of losers? They have to do that to you, you know? What, what do you say? I just stripped you all your rights and didn't say, oh, come on, how can you ain't fighting back? So Wes, we're gonna come over and pick up these pieces here. That's stuff that was thrown down in the bottom there some time ago. It looks to me like it could be adobe, squared off. It's got paint on it. We pulled it out and set it to the side, so we're gonna take that with us, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, how are you today? We're uh, July 7th. Downstream, everybody. We're still heading downstream towards Salinas and eventually towards Marina and the uh, uh, Monterey Bay Sanctuary. Behind us here, we're stopping in particular because this is the old Pacific Camp. So back in the day, this is the old Pacific Camp. Alaska is a This is the backside. Maybe 
some of it, but not all. Right. But see, this is what you're looking at. Santa Lucia's, the wineries are all around the hillside, and you got a road the road, takes you over the spring, and out there's there's Monterey. We're going to take a look at this whole area here, that you see as a swamp area, and it, it, it creates a lagoon, and imagine it to be a, a, a lake, something like uh, what they have in Watsonville, for example. There are a couple of saloons that are nice, nice areas. They look beautiful. Uh, the walk areas, the environmentally sensitive areas, of course. And that's the part of that. This helps feed our water aquifers. I believe we to fill it with water intentionally. And then uh, uh, in there so that it rejuvenates our water aquifers. Chular has been uh, dealing with contaminated water for the last 30 or 40 years. Gavilan Mountain Range. So from the Gavilanes, it's coming across this way, crossing the highway, and we end up over here with this uh, nice area. Uh, potentially, could have oak trees, redwood trees, whatever we can out here to make it really nice. People can walk here from Chular, and they have their own little park, county park. Great for tourism. We got wineries up on the hillside there, and uh, bring a lot of people to Chular. And uh, nice little cabins on this side, nice historical park, maybe. Uh, historical center. Endless possibilities. Let's take a look down the road and see what we got. Hey, how you doing? This is a Chula. From the uh, Vasquez camp in Chular to our right, my right, is Highway 101, known as the Bracero Memorial Highway. Behind me here is Chular. You see the school in the background, the tower, and uh, the famous old bakery here in Chular. So uh, that's how close we are there. If we look at it back this way, come follow me this way. And what we're looking at is a water source that's coming from underneath the, the railroad tracks and underneath the highway. If you're if you're coming. Uh, if you head it southbound on the highway, on the other side of the railroad tracks, you'll see a bunch of greenery. The greenery, the trees and branches and bushes, on the other side of the highway, that's where the water's coming from. It goes under the bridge, or under this uh, little canal they got here under the railroad tracks, and this is the outcome over here. So you have this natural environment, this natural setting, and you got a creek there. So we're going to close you up to the creek. This is you guys down there in King City. Like your sign. Well, folks, uh, it looks like what we have here is a situation we can't get in close enough because of all the growth. But most of it is, is, is a willow. As we all know, it takes a lot of water to grow willow, and there's a lot of willow. So there's moisture coming in constantly year-round because of agriculture. When they spray their water, the overflow of water in the, on the actual plant or the fields, the row crop, you get the overflow, that leaches onto the, 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 the canals. And for the canals, over this way, 
to the river and down to the sanctuary, Monterey Bay Sanctuary. So this is what we have here, one of the sources, possibly uh, uh, made back in the day when there was more water. It could be a breeding ground for, for, for fish and stuff back in here because they would need a place like this. So uh, if you look around the ambiance here, this is a, a great potential park, county park. That's the question. Why not? It helps fill our water aquifers. That is our future. We need water. Ag needs water. We need jobs. Well, folks, here we are. Uh, found an open space here after I lost my hat. Fold it over. So uh, God works in mysterious ways, ladies and gentlemen. I'm showing you here water. Chular for Chular Canyon. We got water here. If we were to dam that up and feed it, feed it directly into our water aquifers, that'll help refurbish our water, uh, uh, our water aquifers, rejuvenate them. And uh, I know it's already taking its natural process, uh, but a lot of it still gets away when there's a lot of overflow. I'd imagine this water here is probably sitting back in here somewhere, caught up because it can't get out. So that's a good thing. But uh, we'll see what happens. We'll get it back on the road and head down towards Chulard River. Uh, in the next possible project. Because okay. I want to be able to open this up to the public. I don't see why residents from Chula can't feel comfortable here. Seem like good people. Charter club certificate. Serving as area uh, models, modelers. AMA. Charter Chapter 1554. Academy of Model uh, Aerial something there it says. Aeronautics. Aeronautics, all right. I'm not sure if I. There's uh... information. Yep. You get all the names in here Larry Lopez. Steve Kraft, Kevin Jones, Chris Johnson. All right. It's amazing, though. I go down the list. If I go down to the bottom, number 72, and I work my way up from, from the W. Okay. I am looking at... If Pare is Italian or whatever, uh, but I see maybe one or two other than Lopez up here, which is obvious. Um, right there, Larry Lopez, number 33. Okay. But it looks like that's only Spanish surnames in the whole list of mm. Well, planes aren't cheap. No, they're not. No, they're not. This is in Chular. Right behind me is Chular Canyon. And in the back there, and you got the community of Chular. As you look around, this is an airport. Private, uh, well, county owns it. It's Monterey County property. I believe there's the District 79, tax district number 79, 76 maybe. Uh, Tax basin for this. Uh, I would like to see the community of Chular have access to the to the location here. Flea markets on weekends, car shows, events, family gatherings. Uh, but looking at the chart and the ambiance in the area, there's a lot of seating, uh, a lot of organized area. So it tells me it's actively used, and that's great. That's great. We got Salinas River right behind us. Take a look over back this way. Right behind me is the Santa Lucia's. Beautiful mountain range facing to the north. That's why we have more, more greenery on this side versus the other side of the valley. But uh, it's right behind us, maybe about a mile and a half away. And between here and there, right on the other side of me, the branches and the trees we have here is the Salinas River. So we're going to take a quick walk, see if we can get in there and see what we have. Um, so uh, let's move ahead and see where we go. 
Well, here we are in Chilar, going along the Sumerian River. Um, and this is the home of Rocio, Rocio Hunt. Lived along the Salinas River. What a lucky lady. Man, this must have been fun. After you go down the river, you go over here, pick up lettuce, take it home, make a salad. Here we go. Here's the river. We are facing downstream. There we go to the pipes. Tractor. The trailer home pipes. A lot of open space here. Along the embankment. And uh, this is all potential work area. Things could happen in there that I think would be nice for recreation. Here's our Salinas River. You don't have to be down in there. Hope you enjoy the, the ambiance. U-turn here. Uh, this is River Road, and uh, uh, as a Chular, uh, you know what? That's a you no. Know, there's a wine sign. Same wine sign we saw back in Greenfield. Santa Lucia Mountain Range, close up there for you. Here we go again. I guess Wes is having a good time. It's that fresh air got to him. Yeah, it must have been that fresh air that got to him. You know, he's from Salinas. Here we go. Monterey Wineries Org. Make sure you folks get that. Monterey Wines. Monterey Wines. So, we got a great shot of the sign. And now we're headed the back towards Chular and Highway 101 because we're headed downstream. So, here's what the other side of the river looks like. As you're looking at Santa Lucia's. And now we get an opportunity to look upstream at the water. There's our Salinas River. Again, we're talking July 7th, 2018. So they're letting the water out to fill the water aquifers. And it'd uh, be nice if they had a couple of dams, small dams, earth, or not earthen dams maybe, but something that holds back the water, allowing it to leach into the water field and uh, the water aquifers, I mean, as well as uh, creating a lake-type setting where people can enjoy and float around in a canoe or something near and around the local communities where the community come out and enjoy. So here we have it. Uh, Salinas Valley, Water Basin, and the Salinas River. And we're approaching where the airfield uh, is located here to the right as we're going, coming down the road. And there's the entrance to it. So as far as an entrance and getting in and out, uh, 24200 uh, Chular Road. And now we're headed back towards uh, Highway 101 and the community of Chular.